This right here is a GTX 1080 Ti and this is a Ryzen 5 3600. Now this is a budget PC I put together for around about 300 USD, so it's really cheap. However, this monitor right here is a 520 Hz 1080p fast IPS from ASRock. This is their latest and greatest high refresh rate monitor and I was curious to know how much of a budget do you need on your PC to be able to run around 520 FPS at 1080p? And so we're gonna start off today's video with this system right here, and we're gonna test four different games out. That being Valorant, Counter-Strike 2, Marvel Rivals, and also Fortnite. And we're gonna, after that, test with a variety of graphics cards. But what if you're an aspiring pro gamer and you don't have a lot of money but you still want the 520 hertz edge, then what hardware will you exactly need? So while starting this video, I was actually having some problems getting 520 hertz, but then I realized Windows 10 has a 500 hertz limit, meaning if you've got a 520 hertz monitor, you cannot unlock that refresh rate within Windows 10 itself. So then you're gonna to have to go to either Windows 11 or Linux. And although Linux does support 520 Hz, two of the four games here actually don't support Linux. So this means that we're pretty much hard stuck having to use Windows 11 for the rest of the tests here. But I did manage to get our tests done on this Ryzen 5 3600, as well as the GTX 1080 Ti. What I found was quite interesting. That was the Ryzen 5 3600. It couldn't support any of these games close to 480 Hz still. So we're gonna have to head over to our trusty friend, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. Right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't wanna spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. And for a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and we've got the Ryzen 7 now, the 9800X3D going full throttle to check if 520Hz is doable in the most popular online multiplayer competitive titles. And we'll start off first with Counter-Strike 2. And this is with the four graphics cards right here at 1080p on the lowest settings. And what we saw here was really interesting because the B580 from Intel was kind of like the bar. That was the bar to get over if you want to play this game and you've got a 520 hertz monitor and here it did quite well in fact all the cards did really well in this game with the 5090 of course being a complete waste of money because you're really not utilizing much of that gpu because an rtx 5090 for you guys didn't know is going to be a lot more powerful than a b580 at 4k resolution for instance however back to counter-strike 2 here is where we've got the 1080 Ti and the RX 5700 XT not making the cut, but then when we look at the 0.1% lows, they're actually pretty equal across all these four different GPUs. And you may be wondering what's going on here, Brian, I've seen higher 0.1% lows in Counter-Strike 2. Now I'd put that down to just Windows 11. For me personally, it's genuinely my least preferred OS to use, even though it's kind of a must with 520 Hertz, which we'll talk a little bit about later after we get through these results. Let's go on now to Marvel Rivals, which is blowing up and is quickly becoming one of the most popular competitive online titles. And here's where we've got some really different results. In fact, the GTX 1080 Ti completely fell off in this particular title. I was actually shocked at how poor the optimization was now for the 1080 Ti and Marvel Rivals. I had to go back and check is this right? Am I on the latest driver? And sure enough, it just wasn't running this game that well. Then we go over to the RX 5700 XT. That's actually running it not just really well, it's actually really smooth too with those 0.1% lows being nothing to laugh at. Then the Intel B580 was actually doing poorly here in terms of its 0.1% lows, getting some big stutters coming along from time to time. But then of course the RTX 5090 doing really well. And in fact, it's doing so well just like Counter-Strike 2 that it's completely maxing out the 9800X3D. In other words, if you get an RTX 5090 for 1080p gaming, even on low settings, you're gonna be leaving a lot of <laughs> extra GPU room on the table. And then to put that into different context, you're basically wasting your money buying an RTX 5090 
at 1080p to play games competitively. Now let's move on now to Valorant. And here's where we've got actually 1080p high settings. This is what came on automatically from the first GPU we tested. And the, surprisingly, the 1080 Ti did extremely well in this game. I was actually shocked because the 0.1% lows were amazing. And you may be looking at these charts going, what is going on here? Why is the 1080 Ti doing so well? Well, this is actually, if we look at the RTX 5090 in this particular game, we can see that that is doing really well on the average FPS, but it's also clearly maxing out our 9800X3D. Now, one thing you're gonna see is when this 9800X3D gets completely maxed out, it's then going to stutter more. And this is evidenced in this result with the 1080 Ti falling a bit behind in terms of average FPS, but then picking things up in terms of its 0.1% lows. This result actually really took me back because it made me now want to do a whole separate video and investigate what your CPU should really be running at. And it, in my opinion, if you're playing games competitively, your CPU shouldn't be actually near 100%. It should be maybe under 90%, under 80%, but this is definitely fuel for an investigation. Now with the Battle Mage card being a fairly new card, I guess it just needs more driver optimizations to come out to help correct these 0.1% low stutters. And the reason I'm focusing on these 0.1% lows so much in relation to 520 Hz is, in my opinion, if you are looking at getting a 520 Hz monitor or playing at this refresh rate, I think your main focus is going to be one that is very competitive. And if that's the case, you're gonna want the least amount of stuttering possible. In other words, you're gonna want the best 0.1% lows. So the 1080 Ti followed by the RX 5700 XT, they both did extremely well in this game. They had the two winners of Valorant, which is actually surprising because that's knowledge now going forward where I can say, hey, if you wanna play Valorant with really the best experience, Maybe look into getting an older GPU and you can save a lot of money in the process. But now it's time for the last title here, Fortnite. And here's where we came into some issues and not just with 0.1% lows, as you can see with these charts, the RTX 5090, in fact, it was hammering the 9800X3D so hard at 1080p that I couldn't even boot this thing properly in performance mode. And it just kept crashing. And then I changed it to DX11 and DX12. And what we got was just like mad stuttering. But then we look at our little trusty GTX 1080 Ti and that did phenomenally well. And the RX 5700 XT then did the next best in terms of those 0.1% lows, despite having a slightly higher average. The Intel B580 did suffer the same stuttering. And this time around, however, perhaps it's not the driver with the Intel B580, but since the average FPS is so close to that 5090, I'm guessing it's more the CPU has been hitting its max load and then stuttering as a consequence of that. So with all those results out of the way, it's now time to talk about 520 Hz. And who's it for? And this monitor in particular, the ASRock PG27 FFX2A. Now this is a IPS panel. They call it fast IPS. It's 520 Hz, but is originally, I believe from the research I've done, an AU Optronics 480 Hertz panel that's been overclocked by ASRock. And from my testing right here today, I'll go straight into the deep end with this monitor. The response times are actually extremely good for an IPS panel. They're the best I've seen to this date outside of OLED. And then with OLED, you're then going to be paying about twice as much for the monitor. So an OLED that goes 1080p 480 Hertz, I think there's an LG version of that. I think that's around 1100 USD. This thing's coming in around 550 USD. And the benefit of this panel in particular is that it's extremely bright. You can probably see that this thing's actually becoming a hair light in this video for you guys. That's how bright it is. Coming in with the brightness test of over 470 nits of brightness. So it's definitely going to appease those people who like a bright picture. And if you're playing Counter-Strike and you wanna really see those dark areas a lot easier, this thing is going to do a good job of that. And so it's for those people who aren't satisfied with the OLED brightness, where that's currently the only real limitation of OLED is that it doesn't get bright enough for some people. For me personally, OLED actually does hit the spot perfectly in terms of brightness and the colors are going to be better than that of IPS. 
as well as the fact it's gonna have deeper blacks as well as better response times. And from my tests here with the overdrive on enhanced, the response times are really good. Now, another thing is the input lag is extremely good too as well. Sub five milliseconds, this means that you're gonna be getting a really good gaming experience out of this thing too. But I'm gonna interlude as well. Man, Linux, like even though you can't play uh, Valorant and Fortnite's extremely difficult to get running on Linux, the snappiness of Linux is something that I haven't experienced to date. The desktop snap of Linux is even slightly better than that of Windows 10. I'm kind of shocked. Anyhow, back to the monitor and 520 Hertz. This model in particular, I was actually shocked out of the box how good the monitor is calibrated in that if you wanted to do accurate photo editing and video editing on this thing, you're actually out of the box gonna keep coming really close to that of a perfectly calibrated monitor. So they've done a really good job getting this thing color right out of the box. And so there's a benefit to one of these monitors too. But then again, 1080p at 27 inch, the downside here is, is that the pixel density isn't that good. For me personally, my gaming monitor right now is 32 inch 4K and that's uh, looking when it comes to gaming a lot more crisp. But then again, 24 inch and 27 inch 1080p is a very popular format for competitive pros. And here's where we're gonna talk about this competitive nature and the pros. And we're gonna look at these results a little bit more. What you're seeing here is pretty much a use case scenario at 520 Hertz. You're seeing certain graphics cards will do better with the 9800X3D in certain games. And so it's not just a cut and dry, get a RTX 5090, then get the 9800X3D. There's gonna be a bit more to that where you perhaps wanna do either of two things and that's maybe set in a manual 520 FPS cap on your games or you can set on things like G-Sync or FreeSync, which is supported on this monitor too. But for me personally, 520 Hertz, I would actually personally rather game on 480 Hertz on Windows 10 than 520 Hertz on Windows 11. Though one more thing to be careful of here is the HDMI and the DisplayPort 1.4. This monitor has two HDMI 2.1 ins, and that's gonna be the best connection to get the 520 Hertz out of this with the least amount of compression possible because it's got the DisplayPort 1.4, but doesn't have DisplayPort 2.1. And this is the problem where if you've got a graphics card that only has HDMI 2, you can only get 240 Hertz. That's the limitations of HDMI 2 at 1080p. So you'll have to use DisplayPort 1.4. And so that means you can get 520 Hertz. It'll just be in a compressed format and not the RGB standard. And so if you wanna get the standard RGB format at 520 Hertz, you'll have to use HDMI 2.1, which was only introduced from RTX 3000 series on Nvidia's side and upwards, and on AMD side, I believe RX 6000 series and upwards. Then on the Intel Battle Mage, that's actually really good because it's got DisplayPort 2.1 and HDMI 2.1, and it's actually relatively inexpensive too. Anyhow, time to quickly sum up two different conclusions for you guys, because it's actually gonna be a huge factor when you're buying a 520 Hertz monitor. First thing is the hardware you are going to need. You're gonna need a really powerful CPU. That is a prerequisite for gaming at this refresh rate. As we evidenced at the start of the video with the Ryzen 5 3600, that did not cut it for any of the games here. Then we step it up to the 7800X3D and we're doing really well, but we're still having problems with our 0.1% lows. And so in the meantime, the best answer to fix this until I look into this a lot more would be to set a manual FPS cap of 520 if you wanna play with V-Sync off, or if you wanna play with G-Sync or AMD's FreeSync on, I would then set a 517 FPS cap on your games. You can actually do this on both cards through the driver set. So now it's time for the final, final conclusion, and that's got to do with this monitor right here. The PG27, I'm just gonna call it the 2A, because there's also a 1B model, and the only difference there is that this 2A model carries a built-in Wi-Fi antenna, and it includes the cables for it. So whether you wanna spend an extra 20 bucks on that, that's up to you. It is a pretty strong antenna from the test that I've done though. But back to the panel itself. 
It is actually surprising how decent this panel is. I actually came into this video with a negative outlook thinking, I don't think this panel is gonna be for many people. But then I realized after testing the brightness and how like shockingly bright it was, especially for a 1080p panel, I was then like, okay, this actually has a place in the market. And then I saw the response times and how good they were for an IPS panel. And that left me thinking, wow, okay, let's just check out the input lag. And that checked out really well. So basically if the input lag is bad on any high refresh rate monitor, especially one you wanna get for competitive uh, gaming, I'd automatically rule that out as a no go because you want really low input lag on a high refresh rate monitor, especially one you're gonna use for competitive gaming. So this thing then checked all the boxes, had really good brightness, really good response times, really good input lag. And then you look at the price of it and it's coming well under what the OLED panels are with the same refresh rates. So I guess that was its place in the market. And this is coming from a guy who came into this liking OLED a lot better than IPS. And I'm still after this video, like I'm not going pro anytime soon, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna win any big money just putting that out there. I'm still gonna be using OLED 4K after this because I really like the gorgeous immersive experience that that gives you. But there's a place for this and it's for competitive pros who really like brightness, who really like 520 Hertz and want the low input lag, as well as perhaps they can't afford a thousand dollars for a monitor. So this thing actually ends up having a place in the market, even though it might be a small niche of people. At the end of the day, it's what makes PC gaming beautiful. And that is different strokes for different folks. But keep in mind, you are going to have to budget money outside of just the monitor. So that's another big thing to consider. Though, when all said and done with today's video, I really hope you guys enjoyed sort of a different spin on a monitor review where I more, wanted to more so test out 520 Hertz and the aspects surrounding that and everything needed for that, as well as learning that I'm gonna have to look into these 0.1% lows a lot more because there's a lot more to it. So <laughs> it's gonna be something that's on my mind now and I hope to bring that content out to you guys in the next few weeks. Don't ask me why these things then get on my mind and I have to get the answers. This is why I do Tech Yes City in the first place because this weird passion, weird obsession for finding things that I guess <laughs> maybe they're relevant for some people, but <laughs> for most people, I'm sure they're irrelevant, but it doesn't matter. I wanna know the answer. And hopefully you guys wanna know the answer too. And if you do, be sure to hit that like button. And also, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to hit me up down below in relation to the monitor and 520 Hertz and the GPUs and things like that. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button too. And ring the bell. You'll get the content as soon as it drops, which is gonna be a lot more content coming very soon. And with that aside, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.